Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. The Ability to Smell Beauty. Written by Marilyn of Many. Do you smell that? Paint asked, flicking her tongue out to taste air. Just like the orange scale lizard she resembled. That is lovely. Where is it? I looked around the forest-lined landing pad. All sorts of plants that I'd never seen before waved on the breeze. Tree things shaped like willows that someone had coated in enough hairspray to make them stand on end. Bush things with leaves that snapped at flies. Moss and mushrooms and lumps that could have been frogs or seed pods. Or maybe oddly shaped rocks. I have no idea, I told Paint honestly. Help me find it, she said, striding away from the ship with the shoulder back held tight and a determination on her scaly face. I glanced back at the captain and several others, who were passing time with an alien card game. The person who was supposed to have delivered our next shipment was late. Nothing else to do but hang around and try not to get bored. We're going to look around a little, I called, walking off to paint. We won't go far. Captain Sunlight nodded, her own scaly yellow face focused on the cards. Scream if you need anything. Then she triumphantly played a card that made Murr flail his tentacles in aggravation. I said that I would, and followed my shorter crewmate as she waded into the undergrowth with her tongue flicking madly. So, uh, what is the exact smell we are looking for? I asked, wondering if that was what right word smelling for. It is kind of a sharp, but in a good way, Paint told me distractedly. Sharp like a good kitchen knife, like string music, like poignant memory. Right. I said, taking an experimental sniff. Everything smelled like alien plants, and not like violins or whatever. Huh. I think it is this way, low to the ground. Paint scrambled under the bushes, getting her bag caught on one of the fire trap mounts. Do you want me to carry that? I asked. Yes, please. She held it up, still under the bush. Fly traps snapped at both of us, but weren't strong enough to do any damage, even to my soft human skin. Paint probably didn't even notice through her scales. I shouldered the bag that held Paint's sketchbook or novel or entertainment screen, whatever she'd brought out while waiting in the sun. I'd been about to go back in for something similar when she'd head off on this quest. Over here, Paint said, sounding more sure. She rustled up the other side of the bush and made light noises. When I made my way around the shrubbery, I found her at the base of a large boulder, gathering walnut-looking things into a greedy pile. Is that it? I asked. Yes, smell one. Pain thrust one towards me. I took it and snuffed. Not bad. Kind of like cloves. That sort of spicy sharpness that just felt festive. Huh, pretty good. Isn't it amazing? Paint asked, holding up a double handful and taking an open mouth whiff. Give me the bag back. I'm taking these with me. Are you sure they're safe? I asked as I handed it over. Do you know what kind of plant they are? Yeah, it's that one from the store on the beach back home, Paint said, shoveling eagerly. The good one that I could never find again. I forgot the name. Sunlight will know. All right, I agreed. They really didn't smell that special to me. It would be interesting to see if Captain Sunlight also treated these things like the lizard alien catnip, or if this was just something that Paint liked. A lot. When she'd gathered everything up on the ground, a few good handfuls... She looked around for more. I spotted one growing from the spindly sapling that poked out of the crack in the boulder, and Paint happily added to the rest. I wonder if there are any other bushes like that, she said, standing with a bag and studying the trees. We shouldn't go far, I reminded her. Gotta stay in screaming range. Sure, sure, Paint said. Just a quick look over this way. I think those plants grow near the beach, and I hear waves. Remembering Calvi's description of the landing pad as being within dancing distance of the sea, I put more attention towards the ambient sounds. That wasn't all wind-blown foliage, after all. Paint was already disappearing into more bushes, so I hurried after, not wanting to lose track of her. Slow down. I'm sure they're not going anywhere. Yes, but they're so beautiful, she said from somewhere ahead. There is a whole world in that smell. Don't you think so? It's okay, I guess. Okay, it's gorgeous. I want to decorate my room with them, then smell these every day. You really don't think it's that big of a deal? Paint sounded insulted. 
I think my nose just works a little differently than yours, I said gently. I'm sure they're very nice. Paint huffed, pushing through the leaves hard and muttering something uncomplimentary about a nose that couldn't smell beauty. I had to laugh. There are plenty of good smells out there, I said. And I don't need a nose for beauty. I have my eyes for that. Really? Payne grumbled. If you can't appreciate this, then forgive my doubts. She said, still grumbling about loveliness and the ability to sense it. When she shoved through the last bushes. Well, there's a beach, she said. No trees. Crackle it. Now let's go back. I ducked under the leafy branch to join her as we turned to go. The view stopped me in my tracks. Blue waves crashed against the beach made of glittering gemstones, sprawling as far as the eye could see in either direction. Every color under the sun, for size and head size and fine shimmering sand, washed right by the waves. I could swear the native bird somewhere was singing in a dramatic crescendo of a symphony, though maybe that was just in my head. Paint, I said, not moving. Can I borrow your bag? I'll carry it back for you. End of story. Story number two. Hellhounds, written by Catfish21SM. Everyone knows that humans like their pets. They are famous for domesticating everything that they can. Everyone thought that they were trying to uplift the hive mind insectoids of Hemnimdus Prime. Until one of their ambassadors showed up at the Galactic Council with a worker drone wearing a leash. He said that it was a gift for his daughter. Humans are very good at it as well. They have a long history of domesticating animals native to their home world. Ever since they developed genetic modifications, they've been on the domestication rampage. If it isn't sentient, then you can almost guarantee that the humans will create some form of domesticated variant. However, they have not edited the genes of any other species nearly as much as their own canine species. One of the first that they were domesticated on their home world. Honestly, the vast majority of the Galactic Council is severely against the human genetic modifications and domestication attempts. It's not like they genetically modify the entire species, or release their modified species back into an environment, but it just seems somewhat unnatural. A bill could very easily pass banning all forms of genetic modification. There is far more support for such a bill than one would ever be needed to pass it. So then, you might be wondering why hasn't the bill been passed already? Or better yet, why hasn't anyone even suggested such a bull? Well, that's easy. It's because the humans' most well-known genetically modified species, the Hellhound. Humans have a long history of using their canine companions in war, oftentimes to great effect. They bred specific types of canines that they called warhounds just for that purpose. And even though they are bred for war, the humans still have a tendency to grow very attached to them. The warhounds never really got out of hand. That is, until the humans started experimenting with genetic modifications. At first, it wasn't that successful. But after they designed an AI that was able to determine what specific sequences of DNA did, what the game was on. Many of the humans' conventional war machines were made completely obsolete, almost overnight. They called these horrific amalgamations hellhounds, and for good reason. The first thing that they did was make them the size of earth elephants. Then they changed their body type to resemble a cross between a large predatory cat and a predatory bear. They kept the canine's head but modified the teeth to cut rather than to hold on to prey. They used AI to maximize the efficiency of muscle tissue to bone mass in order to give it agility, speed, and reflexes, unlike anything that nature could have ever hoped to produce. They improved all of the senses several times over and they gave it the ability to imprint on only a couple of individuals while it was still a young pup, meaning that no one other than its handlers can control it. If its handler dies, then you die. If that wasn't enough, then they gave it intelligence, not sapience, but not far off. They gave it just enough to strategize, but not enough to bog itself down with what-ifs. It was able to change the color of its fur as well. It can't perfectly blend into its environment, but it can make itself a little harder to see, especially in the dark. They turned it into the perfect kitty machine. And speaking of the dark, just for the hell of it, they decided to give it bioluminescent eyes that glow a bright orange slash red color in the dark, for the sole purpose of striking fear into the enemies. They supposedly debated on whether or not to attach guns to them, 
But the natural, if you can even call it that, speed and reflexes of the animal far surpassed any technology the humans had available to them, meaning the guns would just slow its killing spree down. Oh, by the way, did I mention that all of this was before they left their home system? That's right. They made these modifications with the limited genetic prompts found on their home world and some half-baked AI models. The hellhounds that they have now are far more terrifying than they ever were then. So you could probably imagine what might happen if the Galactic Council tried to vote away man's best friend. Yeah, everyone in the Galactic Council except for the humans all have one thing in common. Their worst nightmares need only contain two words. Sick boy! End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Andrical, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's sister, Ambrose Cattell, and Quantum Wednesday. Thank you very much.